And uh, again, the principle is to visually demonstrate the query components and the results and provide rapid and immediate feedback. For that, I'll take a look at the demo here on uh, this display. Just move over to the side here. And we see on it a map of the Washington, D.C. area with the Potomac here. And this is an improved version of where we were a year ago. Uh, in terms of dynamic home finder. The scenario I present to you is that uh, uh, we're coming up on the new administration and you've taken a job with the Clinton administration and your spouse is going to be working at the University of Maryland. You're looking for a home. So the first thing to do is to mark where you want to work here at the University of Maryland right about let's say there the A marker and then your spouse is going to work downtown in the executive office building right about over there as the B marker. Okay. And now each of these points of light on the display um, represent a home for sale. And if I move to the right, I can control this display um, by choosing the distance that I want to be from point A. And now it's set at 30 miles and I'm going to bring it down and you can control rapidly, incrementally, and reversibly the distance that you wish to be from point A. So let's say you decide, you see there's plenty of them, so you say you want to be, let's say, five miles from work uh, so that you could, let's say, bike to work. And now you want to be somewhere inside that range from B, so you slide down and we now can see the set. And this is, looks like we've got about 40 or 50 homes over there. If I now choose about the number of bedrooms, I really want three or four bedrooms, so I move this double box slider to be three or four. I've still got about 30 houses on the, on the display, so why don't we look at the price now, and we want to keep the price down, let's say about uh, 170,000, between 140 and 170,000. And that's given us a set of about a dozen here. Uh, we could trim a little further by uh, choosing, we can choose from houses, townhouses, or condominiums. Let's eliminate the townhouses and condominiums, so we're selecting only houses. Yellow indicates selected fields, and I can see now I've got about 10 of them. If I click on any one of those points, uh, if I just click here, then the bottom of the display gives me a description of that house um, in Tacoma Park, a newer middle-class neighborhood, colonial brick, and fireplace, garage, etc. Uh, this gives you a way of posing a very specific query, seeing the feedback immediately, and getting an answer to your question, plus reformulating your goals as you see the results of this query. Now, another way to use this display is to explore. And here, if you see the whole area of Washington and you want to see different neighborhoods, and let's look for high-priced neighborhoods. I can see them dropping out here, or I can see them, if I move here and just leave the high-priced ones, Potomac, Silver Spring, Fairfax, Virginia. So you might ask yourself a question, is there a correlation with bedroom size, with, with house size, the number of bedrooms? Uh, do you expect to have uh, large houses only in some neighborhoods? Well, let's find out. And the answer is no, they're distributed quite uniformly. What about small houses? Well, you can see there are no small houses in the northwest section where the more expensive houses exist and we don't see the preponderance of those large houses. So this enables you to, po to, to generate queries in a way that I think no keyboard oriented query language with textual output could possibly do for you. So. Uh, this dynamic query uh, was a uh, provocative demonstration in our labs, uh, and it led to many people coming and saying, gee, <laughs> I want to use that tool, and of course it is just a prototype, and we'd love to see a real estate firm pick it up and you know, make it happen here. Uh, but uh, we did find people made some impediments, found that there were some impediments. They said, oh yeah, very nice, you've got a map of Washington, that's good. But I may not always have maps as, uh, as a uh, domain to display the results. Well, we responded to that with this design. And let's come back to the demonstration here, where I have the same data, but now the output, instead of a map, I've replaced with simply textual output. I preserve the directness of manipulation 
on the, on the query. So now if I manipulate the cost, and I hope you can see this result bar on the bottom, as I drag the double box slider, uh, you can see that it tells me how many of the 911 homes in this subset uh, will satisfy the query. So if I go back to the same query of 170,000 um, down to 140,000, you can see there are 150 of the 911 houses that satisfy. If I go back to my query of between three and four bedrooms, I'm down to 89. Let's just choose condominium, uh, eliminate condominiums and apartments, just look at houses. We have 65 here in the whole area. Uh, and I might say I'll insist on a fireplace by deselecting the, the no component. So I say yes fireplace, I have only 14 left. I can scroll this horizontally, I look at the prices, or if I wish I could select to sort by prices, and I now have an ascending order list from 140,950 to 168,950 uh, among these 14 homes, and I could print them uh, or continue to search in other ways. So my point is that this kind of uh, tool which gives you a hundred queries per second every time you adjust the slider box you're issuing a new query uh, produces such a flow of animated information that it helps you organize your thinking and reformulate the goals that you have in doing uh, the, 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 the queries. Uh, so we've looked at points as output, we've looked as text as output, uh, but we've found other ways to make these dynamic queries effective. And uh, the example I want to show you was one we built for the uh, National Center for Health Statistics uh, during the past uh, uh, summer, which uh, shows us a map of the United States and cancer rates. Red indicates high cancer rate. This is cervical cancer data. Um, and if I click on any state, well, let's click on Maryland over here, we'll see on the lower left a box which tells us the statistics that we've got here about uh, the state of Maryland uh, uh, and, and the demographics related to uh, cancer rates. So we might explore just by clicking, but uh, we can also explore by moving the sliders to discover patterns of cancer uh, in the population. So, for example, I see 1950. I could move 1955, 60, 65, and 70, and you can see by the screen changing to blue that cervical cancer rates have gone down dramatically uh, in that period because of the emergence of the pap smear as a widely used test to detect uh, cancer early and thereby uh, provide treatment. So that's one pattern we could discover. And now the other kind of pattern would be here we're looking at this uh, uh, control widget about the percent of college educated and if I slide them down as states begin to drop out you can see that um, the states with low college educated um, populations have high cancer rates and in fact it is the knowledge of availability of testing that leads to lower cancer rates and so we see the unfortunate effect that those with poor education are less likely to seek uh, treatment uh, similarly, if we look at income, we find a similar pattern about income, that the high income states uh, are low cancer uh, states because they have also sought uh, treatment. On the other hand, smoking, which you often think is related to cancer, does not have a direct causal linkage with cervical cancer, and so we don't see the same pattern. Uh, we see some of those red states dropping out, um, because uh, they are, this does, does not correlate as strongly uh, with, uh, the, um, w with uh, cancer. And so uh, that was a remarkable discovery, and the, and the statisticians were very pleased to see this, be able to confirm their hypotheses, and our efforts now are moving towards making 900 regions for a finer understanding, and also going to 20 different statistical values that we should be able to present in this kind of an environment. So these dynamic queries which allow exploration have proved to be very fruitful and fun also. People come and play with these dynamic home finders and several of the other dynamic queries that uh, we've developed here. Um, and uh, in the handout book I, booklet I have a set of slides of other examples uh, that we've done as well. I hope they'll provide some inspiration for you to develop this kind of 
um, continuous feedback and display of information. Sure, there are many problems to be done here, dealing with large data sets, discovering uh, rights and wrong ways to display the information, but we feel that this notion has much promise uh, for people to uh, explore the information that is important to them.